Hi, today we are going to have a look at the 2019 Leaving Cert Ordinary Level Ratio Question or Interpretation of Accounts Question, which is always question 5 in the paper. As per usual, we are giving a trading profit and loss account and a balance sheet, and in part A we are asked to calculate some ratios to two decimal places. The first ratio we are asked to calculate is gross profit margin. So the formula for gross profit margin is gross profit divided by sales multiplied by 100. Now up in the trading profit and loss account here, um, there's a figure missing for gross profit, so we need to work that figure out. So gross profit is simply sales less or take away closing stock. So 650,000 minus 345,000 is 305,000. So sales Less cost of sales gives me gross profit. Now I have my gross profit, I can fill in the formula. The formula for gross profit margin is gross profit, which is 305, divided by my sales figure, which I always get from the top of my trading account, which is 650,000, and I'm gonna multiply that by 100. So 305 minus 650, and multiplied that by 100, so I divide by 650. So that works out to be 46.92%. 305,000 divided by 650,000 or over 650,000 multiplied by 100 is 46.92%. The second ratio I'm asked to work out is the acid test ratio. This is an important ratio as it can be asked here in part A or also on part C, if you are asked if a company is difficulty paying its debts or bills as default due, again, you need the asset test ratio to answer that question. So the asset test ratio is current assets minus closing stock is to current liabilities. So if I go back to the question, I can see from the question here that my current assets are 88,000. And from that, I have to take away closing stock. Again, I can see up here for my PL the closing stock, which is the stock at the end of the year, is 30,000. So current assets are 88 minus closing stock, 30. And I'm going to compare those two current liabilities. I can see from the question current liabilities are the same thing as creditors amounts due within one year, and they come to 33,000. So 88 minus 30 is 58,000, and I'm comparing that to 33,000. So 58 divided by 33 is 1.76 is to one. And again, it's a ratio, so you always write it, is to 1. So 1.76 is to 1. Ratio number 3 we are asked to work out is the period of credit received from creditors. So when we are asked about creditors, we need to know that it is purchases. Okay, so purchases always go with creditors, PC, think of a PC, and sales will go with debtors. So the formula for the period of credit received from creditors is creditors over credit purchases multiplied by 365 because there's 365 days in the year. So from the question, I pick out my creditors figure. Again, as there is only one uh, current liability, the only current liability is trade creditors. So trade creditors are also 33,000. And I'm gonna put that over credit purchases. So again, if I go back to my question, credit purchases are 342,000. And again, <clears throat> I'm going to multiply by 365. So 33,000 divided by 342,000, multiply by 365, is 35.22 days to two decimal places. The last formula we have to work out is the rate of stock turnover. The formula for rate of stock turnover is cost of sales over average stock. 
The cost of sales I can get from the question straight away. Cost of sales here, all of this here is working out my cost of sales, which comes to 345,000. So cost of sales are 345,000. And I'm gonna divide that by the average stock. I need to work out my average stock. Average stock is simply opening stock plus closing stock divided by two. So in the question, my opening stock is 33,000 and my closing stock is 30,000. So I'm gonna add those together and divide by two. So it's 33,000 plus 30,000. I'm gonna add those together, which will give me 63,000 and then divide that by two. Sixty-three thousand. I divide it by two, and then I'll do my working here. My average stock is thirty-one thousand five hundred. So now I have my average stock. I simply put it in here, thirty-one thousand five hundred. So my stock turnover is cost of sales, which is three hundred forty-five thousand, divided by my average stock, thirty-one thousand five hundred, and that is ten point nine five times. The two decimal places. That is part A of the question complete. Part B of the question, you have to explain these four terms and state how they, to, they apply to the above accounts. So there's four uh, terms here, 10 marks each. I think it's usually five marks for stating what they mean and another five marks for showing how they apply to the accounts. So the first one, depreciation. Well, depreciation, what is depreciation? This is the loss in the value of a fixed asset during the year due to wear and tear or the passage of time. As in the older an asset gets, the less it's worth. A business will decide a suitable percentage for the yearly charge, what the depreciation rate is, is it 2% or 5% or 10%? And Kennedy Limited has 50,000 depreciation the balance sheet. So that's where we're linking it back to the question. Depreciation for Kennedy Limited in the balance sheet is 50,000. Shareholders funds. Shareholders funds, these are the amount of money that belong to the shareholders in the business and are made up of issued share, capital and profit and loss account. So the shareholder funds for Kennedy Limited are the issued share capital. If I go down to the bottom of my balance sheet, I will get the issued share capital is 720,000 and the profit and loss account is 155,000. So I'm going to simply fill those in. 720,000 is the issue share capital for Kennedy Limited and the profit and loss account is 155,000, which gives me a total shareholders fund of 875,000. So it's just the amount of money that belongs to the shareholders. The third definition are intangible assets. So what are intangible assets? Intangible assets are the fixed assets that have a value but you cannot see or touch. So they're not tangible fixed assets like buildings and machinery and stuff like that, they're intangible. Examples are goodwill and patents. So goodwill is when you pay more than a company's value that because it has a good name. Okay, so that, that is an asset, but you can't really see it or touch it. And patents is an, a, a new idea that someone comes up with the patent. So again, it is worth something, but you can't physically see or touch it. So they're fixed assets that have a value, but you cannot see or touch intangible assets. And in this question, sometimes intangible assets go on their own here. You'd be able to see the exact figure. Here they, they are not on their own, so they must be included in this fixed assets figures here. So for Kennedy Limited, um, intangible assets would be included in the fixed assets in the balance sheet. The last explanation here, our term, our 7% debentures, 2023, 2024. Well, first of all, debentures are long-term loans. That's what a debenture is, it's a long-term loan. 
they will be repaid here. So these are the years that have to be repaid. So they will be repaid in full during the years 2022, sorry, 2023, 2024. And this here is the rate of interest under the venture earned loan. So they carry a fixed annual rate of interest of 7%. And to relate it back to the question here, Kennedy Limited has a debenture of 100,000. So this 100,000 will have to be paid back in 2023, 2024, and the rate of interest is 7%. Part C of the question. Sometimes they ask you to calculate um, the asset test ratio, or sometimes they ask you, would the company have difficulty paying their debts as they fall due? Which is just another way of uh, asking the asset test ratio. And then we have to explain our answer. So we already have gone through the asset test ratio above. Current assets of 88 minus closing stock of 30, compared at the current liabilities of 33. So we're comparing 58 to 33. So 58,000 divided by 33,000 is 1.76 is to 1. So usually the ideal is 1 is to 1. Over 1 is to 1 is good for an asset test ratio. It means they don't have any uh, liquidity problems or they shouldn't have any issues paying their debts as default due. If it's less than 1 is to 1, so if this was 0 0.8 or 0 0.75 or something like that, then they would have difficulty paying their debts. So Kennedy Limited would, would not have any difficulty paying debts as default due, as their asset test ratio is 1.76 is to 1, and this is greater than the ideal of 1 is to 1. So what does this mean? This means that they have 1 euro 76 available in liquid assets uh, for every 1 euro owed in the short term. So for every 1 euro that they owe, they have 1 euro 76 available in liquid assets that they can convert into cash to pay off the euro that they owe. And the last part of the question, it says the return on capital employed for Kennedy Limited in 2017 was 12%. So last year, the return on capital employed was 12%. We need to work out the capital employed for this year, 2018, and then comment on the profitability of Kennedy Limited. So first of all, we need to work out the return on capital employed. So the formula for return on capital employed is net profit plus interest over capital employed multiplied by 100. So in the question, my net profit is 155,000. Okay, and I have to add back the interest to that. Sometimes you are giving the interest figure up here. If you're given the interest figure up here, you use that figure. If you are not given the interest figure here, you can calculate it. The interest will be on the debentures. So they are 7% debentures and you have 100,000 of a loan and the rate of interest is 7%. So the interest is simply 7% of 100,000. So 7% of 100,000 is 7,000. So net profit is 155 plus interest of seven. And I'm going to divide that by capital employed and capital employed is just the total of the balance sheet, the very last figure in the balance sheet which in this question is 975,000. Capital employed is the last figure in the balance sheet, 975,000. And again, multiply that by 100. So 155,000 and 7,000 is 162,000. I'm gonna divide that by 975,000 and then multiply it by 100. And that works out to be 16.62%. Now we need to comment on this. So the return on capital employed this year is 16.62%. In the question, it tells us that last year in the question, it says last year the return on capital employed was 12%. So the company is making a bigger return than it did last year. We need to comment on this. So the return on capital employed for 2018, which is this year, is 16.62%, which uh, marks an increase from 12% last year. So we're going to state, has it gone up or has it gone down? If it's gone up from last year, it's good. If it's gone down, it's bad. So this is a good return and shows the company is profitable. 
So it's a good return and it's profit. The company's making a profit. 16% is good. Anything over 10, in around 10% would be seen as good. It is also above the rate from risk-free investments, uh, which are banks, building societies, credit unions, and so on, of 1% to 2%. So if you put your money in a bank, building society, or credit union, or that, you get a return of 1% to 2%. Because there's no risk, you get a small return. Here, if you're investing your money in a company, you should be getting a good bit more than that because you're taking a risk. You could make money or lose money. So this company is making a return of 16, nearly 17%, which is a lot more than the 1% or 2% you would get if you left your money in a bank or a building society or a credit union, which is good. It's also above the cost of borrowing of the ventures of 7%. The company has a loan and they're paying back 7% interest on that loan, so they need to make profits of more than that. There will be no point uh, getting a loan and paying 7% interest if the company is only making a return of 2 two or 3%. So we need to compare it to the percentage on the ventures also. It needs to be higher. So when you are commenting on the return on capital employed, you need to compare three things. You compare it to last year to see the, did they go up or down. You compare it to the return you get from a bank or a building society or credit union of 1 or 2%. And you also see is it higher than the rate of uh, sorry, the cost of borrowing on the, of, on the ventures of 7%. So that is the 2019 Leave Insert Ordinary Level Ratios, our interpretation of accounts, question five complete. Thank you.